and I'll make fairy tales can inspire stories. And in fact, Jacopo Ferretti, when he wrote La Cenerentola, he took some elements from Perot and the Grimm's brother. But obviously we are going to have less references to the original one, for example the pumpkin, the fairy or the glass slippers. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, my name is Mirko and I'm your Italian tutor and today, as you guessed, we are going to talk about La Cenerentola by Rossini. And for this lesson we are going to learn the story, but we are going to analyze some important text, because in this way you can expand your vocabulary. Without further ado, let's learn the story, but please pay attention, because your first task is to identify the differences between the original story and La Cenerentola by Rossini and you have to put them in the comment section below. So we have a lot of characters here, so let's have an overview. We have Don Magnifico who has got two daughters, Tisbe and Clorinda, and one stepdaughter, Angelica or La Cenerentola. And then we have Prince Ramiro, his valet Dandini and his tutor Alidoro. Cenerentola is treated like a maid, so she's running the errands, cleaning the house, preparing the food. The scene opens with Cinderella singing a song about a king who gets in love with a common girl. Suddenly, Alidoro entering the house disguised as a beggar. But this big Clorinda are scared, like, no, 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 go away, we don't want to, to talk to you. But Cenerentola, because he is humble and with good heart, welcome him and offer coffee and bread. Courtiers announce that the prince is coming to the house, so Tisbe and Clorinda wake up their father. And here we are going to analyze the first part, Mie rampolli femminili. Mie rampolli femminili, mie rampolli femminili, vi ripudio, vi ripudio, mi vergogno. Un magnifico mio sogno mi veniste a sconcertar, vi ripudio. Come sono mortificate, degne figlie d'un barone. Via, silenzio ed attenzione. State il sogno a meditar. Mi sognai fra il fosco e il chiaro, un bellissimo somaro. Un somaro, ma solenne. Quando un tratto, oh che portento, sulle spalle a cento a cento gli spuntavano le penne, e in alto volò. E in cima un campanile come in trono si fermò. Si sentono per di sotto le campane sdendonar, col cici cici giù di botto mi faceste risvegliar. Ma d'un sogno si intralciò, ecco il simbolo spiegato. La campana suona festa? Allegrezza in casa è questa. Quelle penne? Siete voi. Quel gran volo? Plebe addio. Resta l'asino di poi. Ma quell'asino sono io, che vi guarda, vede chiaro, che il somaro è il genitor. Fertilissima regina, l'una e l'altra diverrà. E il nonno una dozzina di nipoti abbraccerà. Un re piccolo di qua, un re babbolo di là, e la gloria mia sarà. Ok, let's start with ripudio. Ripudio can be a noun and also a verb. So the verb is ripudiare. It means basically disown. Sometimes, you know, our parents just do jokes. I would think so. When basically you piss them off. Or maybe you are going to do something where they completely disagree, but you are going ahead with your... Plan, they can say if you se fai questo ti ripudio, okay? But obviously it's like a joke, okay? To intensify that you shouldn't do that. Then we have this is very important because it's completely different from the English one. Mi vergogno, mi vergogno. I would say that sounds better to translate it as I'm embarrassed or I'm ashamed of myself, but mi vergogno, we say it quite often, okay? And sometimes Italians, we tend, we try to translate it as I ashamed of myself, which I think sounds a little bit stronger in English. So I think it's more, I'm embarrassed. So for example, you have to do a presentation in front of your class or at university or at work, and you can say, oh my God, mi vergogno. And I think in English you would say, um, I'm embarrassed. Then we have mortificate. In English, you can translate it as mortified, but I think it sounds better humiliated. So, for example, you have a relationship with a guy, okay, 
and the guy said, tonight I can't because I'm really busy. Okay. Then you go out and you see him in the restaurant with a girl. And obviously you are assuming many things. You enter in the restaurant like in the best American movie. You act like maybe you throw something to his head. You start to play the drama queen. And then you find out that the girl is just his sister. And here you can say, oh, solo mortificato o mortificata. Okay. Let me write it here. Mortifi mortificato o mortificata. Okay. Then we have Somaro. And actually, I would like to do a lesson about animals that basically they're linked to expression. So Somaro is a donkey, but in Italian we have Somaro e Asino. And it's an expression also to say when someone is not very diligent, for example, at school, or you don't listen and you keep making the same mistake. So maybe your mom or your elementary teacher can say, Sei un Somaro. Let me write it down. Sei un Somaro. This one, I think I heard it, to be honest, more adult to child. If it's adult to adult, you can say asino or asina, okay? So, for example, as one of your friends says something wrong, you can say asino, okay? Okay, addio, goodbye. Obviously, when you learn a language, you the first thing that you're going to learn are the greetings. And addio is a greeting, like, for example, goodbye. But also in English, I think, you wouldn't say to your friends, goodbye, you would say maybe bye, okay? In Italian, we wouldn't say to someone, addio, to basically uh, say bye-bye. We would say ciao. Here, there are many words that I assume you're going to know, but just to have a look overview. Re, king, regina, queen, nonno, grandfather, nonna, grandmother. Okay. But there are some twists. So when the prince come into the house, he dressed up as his valet because he wants to check in incognito about these girls. When he entered the house, he clicked straight away with Cenerentola and both of them got attracted to each other. But then Cenerentola flee away. And then the fake prince arrived, who is Dandini, disguised as a prince. Obviously, Do Magnifico, Tisbe and Clorinda flutter him because they want to get invited to the ball and Don Magnifico hopes that he's going to choose one of his daughter because in this way he can secure his future because we have to remember that Don Magnifico basically spent all uh, Cenerentola's fortune to support their upcoming. Obviously Cenerentola wants to get to the ball but Don Magnifico doesn't care about her and she dismissed her. But here we have Alidoro who helped Cenerentola get to the ball. At the ball we have Don Magnifico who keep pushing his daughter to the prince. But remember here, the prince is Dandini, okay? But now there is a kind of competition because a strange lady comes into the room. And Don Magnifico, Colorin, Dentis, but they look at her like, but is she Cenerentola? They're confused because she looks like her. But then the night proceeds. The prince keeps flirting with Cenerentola and at some point Cenerentola confessed that she's not attracted to the prince but she's attracted to the servant. But the servant is the real prince. So it's like, ding, perfect match. But Cenerentola basically start talking with the servant and give him a bracelet and said, if you really care for me, you're going to find me. And she lived. And here we are going to analyze. Si, ritrovarla io giuro. Si, ritrovarla io giuro. Amor, amor mi muove. Se fosse in grembo a Giove, io la ritroverò. Pegno dorato e caro, che mi lusinghi almeno. <ride> come al labbro e al seno, come ti stringerò. Noi voleremo, domanderemo, ricercheremo, ritroveremo. Dolce speranza, freddo timore, dentro il mio cuore. Stanno pugnar. Amore, amore. Ma da guidare. <laughs> Sorry for this interpretation, I don't know it came like this. <laughs> uh, juro is a very important word because we use it quite often and it's I swear. And especially when you want to basically make sure and promise to your friend or girlfriend, your parents, that you didn't do that or you are going to do that. Okay, and it's a strong word, but we use it. Okay. Then, um, I highlighted these verbs because here it's future, 
Okay, I know that I stopped with grammar because I wanted to focus last month and this month on different things because I know that just doing grammar it can get boring, it can be overwhelming. But we are going to see the future, even though, just to give you an anticipation, we don't use it as in English. So in English you have maybe will, the present continuous, be going to. We use the future but less. We use more the present to indicate the future. Okay, so this is a good news for you. Just few words here. Amore, love. Amore, you can say when you call your boyfriend or your girlfriend, like amore, pass me the salt. Okay, because maybe in English it would be, it sounds weird to say love, pass me the salt. Uh, you would say maybe han or sweetie, okay? Another important word, timore. Timore means fear, okay? And in Italian, we would say io ho timore. I have, for this reason, when in English, we would translate it, I have fear, okay? I think in English, it would say I'm scared of or I'm frightened of. Io ho un timore. Io ho timore o io ho the Magnifico now is at the point that he wants the prince to choose one of his daughter. And here we have the revelation, because Dandini confessed that actually I'm only the servant, I'm not the prince. The Magnifico is upset, they leave and they go home. But that night there is a thunderstorm, so the prince carriage broke down and they ask hospitality to Do Magnifico. When they enter, obviously Cenerentola is a maid. Do Magnifico tells Cenerentola to bring a chair to the prince. But remember that Cenerentola doesn't know who is the real prince. So when she gives the chair, she gives she gives the chair to Dandini. And Do Magnifico says, no, it's not him, the prince, it's the other person. So when you look at him, Ramiro gave him the bracelet and they clicked. But now Cenerentola's family is quite naughty to her and starting threatening her. But Ramiro and Dandini starting defending her and declare that that family must be punished. But here, Cenerentola, because she's humble and she's good-hearted, say please forgive them. So Ramiro and Cenerentola get married. And obviously now, Don Magnifico wants to get at least acknowledged by his daughter. Cenerentola starts thinking about his past. For example, the fact that she was unhappy, she was basically treated badly. And here we have the last part that we are going to analyze, which is Nacqui nell'affanno non più mesta. Nacqui all'affanno e al pianto, soffri tacendo il cuore, ma per suave incanto dall'età mia nel fiore, come un baleno rapido la sorte mi accaggiò. No, 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 no. Tergete il ciglio, perché tremar, perché? A questo se involate, figlia, sorella, amica, tutto trovate in me. Non più mesta accanto al fuoco, starò sola a gorgheggiare, no. <laughs> Fu lampo. Un sogno, un gioco, il più lungo e palpitar. Here I just want to point out two important words. So pianto can be the noun, so weeping, also the verb piangere. Okay, we use it quite a lot actually. Ho oh, pianto tutta la mattina. I cried all morning. Okay. Baleno. Baleno actually meaning lightning flash but it also meaning like fast extremely fast okay for example Maria called me because she's desperate because her boyfriend dumped her Maria sono lì in un baleno meaning I will basically teletransport it myself into your house okay it's super fast okay few words that we should know figlia daughter sister friend and everyone that's present there, so his family, acknowledge that she's worth it of the throne. So what do you think about this story? Do you like it? Let me know in the comment section below. Obviously, if you don't want to put in the comment section below, you can also email to youritaliantutor01 at gmail.com. The same email address where you can write me if you have any comments, any feedback, any suggestion, any video, any collaboration, write me everything you want. And I see you in the next class because next class we're going back to grammar because we need to finish learn the superlative. So remember to do all your homework and also extra homework and I see you next class. Bye for now.